Hello. Today I'm going to talk about Range Hunter. Now I have TradingView loaded with Bitcoin and nothing else loaded on the chart. And I have Range Hunter loaded in a separate window. This dark black line is the median or the midpoint between a high and a low of Bitcoin. This blue line is the price action. Basically this here simplified. Now what we're going to do is simply merge this and we'll get a better perspective of the overall look. Okay, so we want to move the range hunter window to the upper pane. Now when we do this at first, the two windows are not going to line up. As you can see, we have the original price action then we have range hunters action. So now we have to line up the price charts. We come back up here. Now the Bitcoin price chart is called uh, the A chart or panel A. Scale A is what it refers to here. The range hunter scale is B. So by clicking here, pin to scale and pin to A, Range Hunter will be recalibrated to match up with Bitcoin's actual price action. There we go. Now we have a big picture of Bitcoin. Here you see the price action in relation to the median. This is your highest sell boundary. And this is your lowest buy boundary. The high boundary and low boundary start at 10. And then, for example, buying, this is 10, this is 9, this is 8, and so on. For selling, this is 10, this is 9, this is 8, and so on. Now, this is a pretty flat or ranging aspect. Each channel is 10% of the total between the high and the low. Now, let's go up to the one hour mark and get a longer term viewpoint of Range Hunter. It's going to take a few minutes to load, but now you're beginning to see a much bigger picture. And this is really where we want to look at. Right here, this is where Bitcoin hit Black Thursday, and it went all the way down to its lowest, which is about 3800 And up here, this is where Bitcoin hit its highest. This is on the basis of the current year. But now, how can we turn this information into a viable strategy that we can use? Well, we already know from here that Bitcoin has been ranging in a 10% line. So between the median and a lower boundary. Now, of course, we can always... load our settings and we can actually begin scaling down the buying and the selling to get to the range we want. Of course your laptop will be faster than this I hope unless it's as old as mine. There we go. 
Now, Range Hunter has recently undergone aggressive modifications for its auto boundary detection. As you can see, it does pretty well right now. So we're going to go ahead and leave that alone. And only use the auto boundary. Let's move this window over some. Now, as I said, this is the 10 boundary. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So we want to set our cell boundary to number 5. Now, this is the buy boundary. 10, 9, 8, 7. So let's set our buy boundary to number 7. Mm -hmm. And it will recalculate. And you will see the chart change appropriate to, we should see buys here, we should see a buy here, and we should see a couple of buys here if they crossed. And everything from here and all of these should show cells. Range Hunter is a long-term mindset. It's not meant to be fast. It's meant to look for these kind of situations. Like from here to here would be a huge profit for a short. As you can see, Range Hunter is calculating everything over. Now, you can use Range Hunter by itself, or you can use it with any number of other mindsets that Jackrabbit supports. For example, here, this buy to this sell is going to be a 20% profit. But as you can see, well, okay, it's going to reload. As you can see from the chart, though, once it fully finishes, it took almost a month to set this up. Now, if you're in a one-minute chart or any of the other charts, it's still going to take a month. So, Range Hunter somewhat doesn't pay attention to the time frame. The time frame just shows you a different picture, but it just waits on the market for it to achieve its results. So while you're looking at your different pictures, your different time frames, you'll see Here's the same trade, but now you get a little bit more of a chart that you can see just how long it took. But it's still going to take the same amount of time. And that's important when you're dealing with Range Hunter. Range Hunter is about patience. And now here, because at this point you don't know what your stop loss is going to necessarily be or if it's going to do like here and drop. So right here, kind of a sneaky tactic would be to use this boundary as a stop loss. That way if it hits this boundary at all, it sells out. So this is a good way to be able to build a dynamic stop loss. 
and that dynamic stop loss can be used for any other mindset. You don't necessarily have to use Range Hunter for buying and selling, but it can be used for dynamic stop losses, it can be used for market perspective, it can be used for a wider range of market analysis. So don't necessarily limit your thinking when it comes to Jackrabbit's mindsets. Many of these mindsets can be used in very unconventional ways to create very interesting layers. And that's what Range Hunter is, is a part of that layer. Where you may not want to use a long-term strategy to trade on, but you might want to use a long-term dynamic stop loss to prevent serious losses. So, Range Hunter has a lot of capabilities in that regard. And it's important when you're looking at your analysis, always look for the details. Again, we're looking at the same information, just the different details of how spread out these transactions are. Let's see if we can pan this chart over a little bit. And see if we can line up that last buy signal we saw. Okay, it's going to be stubborn. Okay, here we go. We're getting it slowly moving here. Remember what I said about Range Hunter being math intense. It's always looking at your data and always breaking it down into these ranges. So it's important that you're aware of that when you're working with Range Hunter. Give yourself plenty of time to run into little unusual situations like what I'm facing right now. Now, why are we waiting for this to scroll where we want it to? Something I do want to mention. When you're looking for your coins, the best coins are always going to be the ones that cross the median frequently. If you have a coin that's stuck down here in the lowest channel, that may not necessarily be a good coin to work with. If you have a coin that's stuck up here at the highest channel, the same thing is always true. It may not be a good coin to work with. You want to see these kind of fluctuations around your median. Because that means the coin has reliable volume and reliable price action. But it will be ranged limited on very small time frames. That is just the nature of the whole system. So if you're going to look at the one minute or even a one second time frame, you're going to see a 10% range guaranteed. If you see a coin moving more than 10% on a one minute time frame, that's a sign to get out of the coin. That's not good. You don't want that kind of a drop on a one minute time frame. That's very bad. So you could use Range Hunter in that regards depending upon the time frame you're looking at, to actually set up a physical dynamic stop loss at a 10% drop. Now you would have to keep track of it and adjust routinely 
where those boundaries are. But it is a good way to give you an insight to the overall picture of the coin. Okay. We can see here we had almost a hit. Range Hunter will not purchase unless it goes below the boundary. And then it has to rebound above it. Going below it is not enough to signal a purchase. Same thing with selling. It's got to go above the boundary and rebound below the boundary. That's a trigger for a sale. It's got to cross over and then cross under. Important because that triggers a stable sell point. Now this one's a little bit harder to tell, but the price action broke the boundary and then rebounded. From the standpoint of Range Hunter, that's a viable signal. And Range Hunter does actually watch that type of behavior. Okay. We can see here ranging. We can see over here ranging. And we are not scrolling too fast here for some reason. Ah, here we go. Here's the buy right here. Notice it broke the boundary. And then here's the sell. So it broke the boundary on the 23rd, and it sold on the 7th. Mm -hmm. So that gives you a good time frame to look at for this particular coin. When you're using Range Hunter, use the visual script. This visual script tells you a lot. Even when you're not using Range Hunter directly, and you want to give an overall picture of where the asset sits. This gives you a good perspective just for that. The one thing though you need to be aware of with Range Hunter. Whenever you use it, it is long term. If you're going to spend almost a month waiting for a transaction to take place, don't spend that month waiting for an $11 position. Make sure your position is appropriate to the amount of time you are waiting. If this is your only trade, you're not going to break even unless you have a $50 or $100 position. For example, on a $100 position, we have a 20% variance that's going to be a $20 profit. Is that enough to break even? No. You actually need to have a $200 position for a $40 profit. So think about the duration as part of your position size variables. The longer you have to wait for a trade to complete, the bigger your base order has to be to make that profit. That is a very important consideration when you're looking at your time and duration. Which is why I heavily recommend you mix long and short strategies together. For example, you could use Range Hunter to pick up low boundary entries here but use a regular scalping strategy to sell them way up here. So you're getting the best of both worlds and you're layering your purchases so that one single sell point will rack them all up into a single profit. It's the same thing with Knife Catcher. Layer your trades to think about both long and short term. Knife Catcher is not as long as Range Hunter, 
for the most part. But if you're looking for a 10% knife, that might take a while to get it. So again, base your amount of weighting appropriate to the position you're purchasing. Range Hunter is the longest term strategy Jackrabbit offers. You can hold for a few days, like here to here, would only be a few days for a nice 10% profit. You could end up holding for a month. You could actually end up holding longer, depending upon your particular strategy. So always think about that strategy on the basis of how long you want it to work. For example, here's a good example. Up here, this is boundary number 10, cell boundary 10. This is my boundary 10. This is very unusual to see boundary to boundary hit, and it usually does not take place this fast. This is a relatively quick motion. You're looking at about a full month here. Not all coins are going to have that kind of a setup. So if you want a buy down here and a sell up here at the highest boundary, it might take you a year to wait for that position to line up just right. Now, if you're going to wait a year for that kind of a profit, and this is pretty much a 100% profit, then you're going to need to have something that's going to really equal that time and risk. Because this can go bad anywhere along the way very quickly. For example, let's get to the next highest level and see just how bad it can get or just how long it took. Now we're actually going from the current year to the previous year. So right off the bat, if you look here, we're dealing in four months worth of history. And this buy point isn't even close here. So at the very minimum, four months of history. Let's push it back further. Okay, now we're getting a very long-term picture. And as you can see, if you were waiting for here on a buy point, you wouldn't have been able to put your purchase until way back here in 2019. April of 2019, and then you would have sold off July of 2019 you wouldn't have got another 10 boundary purchase at all for almost a year. And it still hasn't gotten to that point even now. So that is something that you need to be aware of and you need to think about with Range Hunter. It is long term. And I do mean long term. That is important. So be sure you look at your whole history when you're planning out how to use Range Hunter to get the best impact if you trade with it. If you use it as a visual perspective, then keep in mind exactly that these channels are 10% boundaries. And as you look to how you go to make your profits, crossing a one full channel is 10%. So if you buy here at the median and you sell up here, this is a 15% profit. Don't just 
look at one time frame and think that's going to be the best the coin is going to offer. Don't limit yourself with this kind of a strategy. Take advantage of everything this strategy offers, both short term and long term. For example, here, putting a buy down here, 10, 9, 8, 7, at the 6th boundary. Selling it, or buying at the 6th boundary, and selling at the 5th boundary. 10% profit. And right now, as you can see, this is pretty much a very flat range. It's not going very far very quickly. That's scalping territory. And yes, in this case, for Range Hunter, 10% is a scalp. Keep that in mind when you're looking at the various ways to apply Range Hunter. Until next time.